What is up guys and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, what we'll be doing is a full guide on how you can reduce input lag, improve your response time, and potentially even boost your FPS in Fortnite. If you go on to enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like on it and consider subscribing as well if you want to see more content just like this in the future. Believe it or not, around 80% of the people watching my videos haven't even subscribed yet, so it would really mean a lot if you could go ahead and help me boost that number up. As well as that, be sure to use code TECO in the item shop if you want to help your boy out as it's 100% free and it really does help me out a ton. Huge shout out to everyone who uses my code of course but with that said and without further ado let's get into today's video so my first tip for reducing your input lag in fortnite is to optimize your in-game video settings what i mean by this is basically all the settings that you can find within fortnite that aren't based on your device itself the options for console are going to be a lot more limited than pc but i'll still be going over all these display settings to give you all the best performance regardless of which device you play on so starting straight from the top you're going to want to make sure that you have full screen selected basically no matter what as both windowed and windowed full screen are going to add extra input lag. Resolution can be whatever you want it to be and obviously your frame rate limit should match your monitor's refresh rate, pretty simple stuff. From there though, the brightness, the user interface contrast, and the colorblind modes don't really make a difference here. But moving on from that, something we do want to adjust is the graphics quality settings. Now the options available here are going to differ quite a bit depending on which mode you use. You can use DirectX 11, DirectX 12, or performance mode. Personally, I absolutely recommend everyone who's struggling with FPS or input delay use this performance mode. The FPS improvement when you switch is just so drastic and once you feel how smooth your game is you really won't want to go back. If you do decide to try out performance mode then I recommend that you set textures and meshes both to low and then view distance can be whatever you want. Technically the most optimal choice for view distance is near but you could get away with medium, far, or even epic depending on whether or not you prefer it that way. If you don't use performance mode you can basically just set everything to low maybe with the exception of view distance once again and it should be all good. As well as that I recommend a 3D resolution setting of 100% simply because low levels on this just look really wonky to me but you can definitely feel free to experiment with this. Lowering your 3D resolution can definitely help quite a bit but it also makes your game noticeably lower quality so it's really up to your preference in the end. Moving further down the list if you have the motion blur setting make sure that's off. V-Sync should obviously be off and show FPS can be off or on it doesn't really change much apart from letting you know where your FPS actually is. So just for reference I'm gonna put on screen what I use in terms of settings for the lowest input delay, highest FPS, and best performance overall. If you do decide to use these settings, you should see a notable boost in FPS, less input delay, and your game should overall just feel much better, so hopefully that helps you guys out. Moving on from that though, another super quick tip that you can use to lower your input delay is to simply close other apps that are running on your device. Especially for PC players, closing other apps that might be running such as Spotify, Discord, and even the Epic Games Launcher can help you lower your input delay and even potentially lower your ping in some instances. You can simply head to the bottom right corner of your screen, go to the taskbar, and open the little menu to see which apps you're actually running in the background. From there, you can simply right click on the icons for whichever apps you're not using and close them just like that. Quickly closing an app or two that you don't really need can free up a lot of room for your device to run and make your overall experience much smoother, so be sure to give this a shot. Another thing that's definitely worth doing is to disable some startup apps. What startup apps basically do is they essentially turn on the second you open your PC. So basically, no matter what, these specific apps are going to be running pretty much non-stop. So with that said, obviously, if you have startup apps that run in the background while you're playing, they can use up a lot of your RAM and CPU space, so simply disabling them can make your game run a lot smoother. All you've got to do for this tip is head to your task manager and then go to the startup tab. From there, you're going to see a bunch of apps and it's basically going to tell you whether or not they run on startup. So if you see an unnecessary app, select it and click disable, and then it'll stop running in the background unless you specifically open it. And obviously that's going to give your game more room to run. This simple step can help you boost your FPS and massively lower your input delay, so be sure to give this one a shot if you haven't yet. The next step is a super simple one and that's to verify your Fortnite files. This step is super easy, simply head to your Epic Games launcher, head over to your library, go to the three dots next to Fortnite and select verify. What this does is essentially scans your Epic Games files ensuring that none of your files are actually corrupt. If you find that your game crashes a lot or you just have a lot of input delay overall, there's a good chance that this simple step can make a massive difference so definitely be sure to give this a shot. And even if you have verified your files in the past, there's definitely a chance that you've had files get corrupted recently, so it's definitely worth doing this step once in a while just to make sure that you're all set. Moving on to the next step, and this step is to simply update your drivers. You'd be really surprised by the issues you can run into from not updating your drivers. Some of these may include stutters, input delay, game crashes, and there are probably more as well. If you have an Nvidia graphics card, simply head to your GeForce Experience app, go to the Drivers tab, and just go ahead and download the newest driver that you have available. This will get you all up to date and can help solve a lot of issues that you might be running into when it comes to performance in Fortnite. If you have an A 
AMD graphics card, you should be able to simply update your drivers through the AMD Radeon software, similar to the way you would do it with Nvidia cards, just with a different app. I'm sure you can also Google something like how to update drivers on AMD if you're having any trouble. The next step is a very simple one as well, and that's to disable in-game overlays. In-game overlays are basically little notifications or kind of icons that go on top of your game. And if you have them on, they can cause FPS drops, input delay, and other issues within Fortnite. To disable in-game overlays on Discord, simply hop into your settings, go to the game overlay tab, and tick the enable in-game overlay setting off. This will do a few things. It'll stop messages from showing on your screen when you receive them, which can also be really distracting. And as well as that, they're also going to remove the icons on the top left if people are in your call while you're playing. And of course, both of those changes should help you reduce your input delay and boost your FPS. Another method to lower your input delay, and one that's overlooked by many players, is your replay files. When you play a Fortnite match, your device is almost recording your game in a way to actually get the replay file of your match. Turning off your replays is super simple, and it can actually help you improve your performance by a bunch, especially if your computer is already struggling. To do this, simply head to your settings, the second icon at the top, which is the little gear icon, and then go all the way to the bottom, and you can turn off all forms of replays. This will stop replays from recording completely, and then you can head to your actual replay tab in game, open your replay folder, and delete all the files from there. That way, your pre-existing replays won't take up any storage on your device either. The main downside to turning off replays is just the fact that you can't VOD review since obviously your games aren't recorded, but if you really want to improve your input delay and don't plan on VOD reviewing the games that you're actually playing, this tip is a super easy way to do just that, reduce your input delay. Moving on from that though, another super simple adjustment you can make whether you play PC, console, or even mobile is to adjust which actual cosmetics you use in game. Believe it or not, the skin, pickaxe, and weapon wraps that you use in Fortnite can be responsible for higher or lower input delay as well as FPS. When it comes to outfits in Fortnite, even a little bit of animation or a little fancy thing on your character can cause huge fluctuations in FPS and input delay. In terms of which actual cosmetics to use, usually the simplest and low animation skins tend to do best, but for specific skins, any of the skins shown on screen will be really good for lowering input delay and boosting FPS. And of course I want to give credit to It's Jerian for the screenshot and for actually making this method well known. I learned this from one of his videos and it actually does make a huge difference. Aside from those specific skins though, pretty much any skin without fancy effects, animations, or accessories should be pretty good. Those skins are just a few of the top performing ones. For back blings, pretty much any back bling is going to increase input delay and lower FPS, so it's generally recommended to not even bother using one. Just like the most optimal skins, it's a similar concept for pickaxes as well, where the simplest pickaxes without any fancy animations tend to do the best. And for weapon wraps, once again, it's recommended to not even use one, but if you insist on using weapon wraps, then just use any wrap that's just one or two plain colors or something simple in general should do the trick. If there's one thing to absolutely be sure of though, it's to not use any reactive wraps or wraps with animations on them. Those tend to be the most brutal when it comes to input delay and FPS, so if you do insist on using a wrap, then just use something simple. But with all that said guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's video on how to reduce input delay and improve your performance in Fortnite. Be sure to drop a like if this video helped you out, and consider subscribing as well if you want to see more content just like this in the future. As well as that, if you feel like helping your boy out a bit extra, then consider using code TECHO in the item shop as it's 100% free and it really does help a lot. With that said though, thank you all for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.